Fortnite might seem like a casual, kid-friendly game on the surface, but if you dig down deeper, you'll find players spending countless of hours honing their skills, dedicating their lives to the game, not only to be the best, but also at a shot at winning millions in prize money. What up guys, my name is Christoph, and in this video, we'll be discussing the full competitive history of Fortnite, from its earliest points back in 2017 in the first few seasons, leading up to the insane prize pools and competition we see today. But before we get into it, if you guys wanna start winning more in Fortnite and flex on your friends, then go to ProGuides.com and find yourself a pro-level coach right now. Before Tfue, before Mongrel, before all the competitive Fortnite superstars, there was just a game, and it wasn't all too popular. Our story begins all the way back on September 27th, 2017 with the beginning of Fortnite. Fortnite Battle Royale is one of the many Battle Royale games that saw success around 2017. A few other popular titles at the time included H1Z1 Battle Royale, which was a fighting ground for some of the top streamers we know and love today, including Tfue and Ninja. Another big game at that time was Player Unknown's Battleground, or PUBG for short. The success of these games largely influenced Epic Games, who at the time was a relatively small game company, to dive into the battle royale genre using their existing game, Save the World, as the foundation for Fortnite Battle Royale. This proved to be a great idea because of Save the World's core gameplay mechanic, building. Building gave Fortnite a unique twist that no other battle royale had and is what makes Fortnite so special to this very day. Fortnite Battle Royale launched in September and saw success that was nothing short of incredible, with 1 million players in the first 24 hours quickly shooting up to 10 million in the first few weeks. It's safe to say that Battle Royale was a massive hit. However, no matter how popular Fortnite became, the entire esports community never believed it could be more than just a kid's game. But then Season 2 came and introduced us to the first generation of competitive Fortnite superstars. Starting in the earliest parts of Fortnite history all the way back in early December of 2017, we saw the first ever competitive Fortnite event take place, an invitational event with all the top content creators. This was before most of us had probably even heard the name Fortnite. This was just at the start of Season 2 since the new crazy updates were showing so much potential for the game, and Fortnite Battle Royale was blowing up at a ridiculous rate. Unlike the packed stadiums of today's tournaments, these Fortnite Invitationals were held in online custom games, similar to any standard scrim nowadays. The players that Epic invited included popular Fortnite streamers, with Daquan and High Distortion being a few of the biggest names. And while there weren't any cash prizes or rewards, this was really the first competitive event ever and was the start of something big. The player who won this tournament, the first ever Fortnite tournament, did so in dominating fashion. Can you guys guess who it is? There were five total games, and believe it or not, the same player won all five of them. This player was none other than Daquan, who later joined TSM as a popular streamer and content creator. Daquan was the ultimate player early on in competitive Fortnite, and this performance put him in the conversation for the best in the world. Moving on to later in Season 2, we saw the rise of TSM Myth and his creation of the first ever competitive Fortnite Discord server. Since there were no custom games and no major competitive events at the time, the pros were forced to take things into their own hands. They set up a bootleg scrim where they'd all get into the same Discord call, start a countdown, and ready up at the same time to get into the same game. Countdown scrims, as they were called, were the first ever form of the pro scrims we see today. This was the point where a few new names like Hamlins and Daquan were popping up, and all of these guys were somewhat pro players who dominated the scene. With an emerging competitive scene and hungry players looking to improve, the flame of competitive Fortnite had officially been ignited. Season 2 drew to a close, and with it came the rise of Season 3, and the birth of Squad Scrims. Until this point, Scrims had been all about solos and duos, but Season 3 is when playing as a full squad really blew up. These squad scrims were absolutely amazing to watch, the teamwork and coordination it took to compete at this level, even at such an early time in the game's history, could not be understated. Viewers were glued to their monitors watching competitive scrims unfold, and major esports teams quickly took notice. Fortnite views were skyrocketing at this point, and every esports org wanted to make a name for themselves in the scene. 
everyone was practicing and practicing, but they still didn't really know what they were practicing for. Scrims continued to soar in popularity, and pros were popping up in the scene left and right. Moving into Season 4, we finally saw the announcement of the first ever official competitive mode, the Solo Showdown. While there still weren't cash prizes, V-Bucks were given away in their steed. 51st through 100th place got 7,500, 5th through 50th got 13,500, 2nd through 4th got 25,000, and finally, 1st place in the solo showdown got 50,000 V-Bucks. In this game mode, each player played 50 solo games. They were scored based on their placement alone, so we really saw some great games. The winner of the solo showdown was a player by the name of V Ruthless, who won 48 out of their 50 matches, closely followed by the player we all know, NRG Zate, who at the time wasn't in NRG. But the solo showdown pales in comparison to Epic's massive announcement for their inaugural competitive season. They shocked the world when they said they'd be providing $100 million in prize money for the next year of competitive play. They said this in their announcement. And oh boy, was this announcement insane. $100 million is a crazy amount, and then finally, one day before the release of Season 5, the announcement was made for the first time ever in a major Fortnite competition, the $8 million Fortnite Summer Skirmish. Summer Skirmish was an eight-week series of qualifiers with $8 million in prize money overall. This was the real beginning for competitive Fortnite. The days of cashless V-Buck prize money tournaments were over, and people could not be more excited. In the Summer Skirmish, each player played 10 games with their points being based off of their elimination and placements. The top players from each qualifier would move on to the Grand Finals where they'd pit their skills against one another. The whole event spanned multiple months and had viewers coming back every week to watch their favorite pros compete for insane prize money. But at the end of the day, there could only be one winner, and that man was Morgaus, who won $225,000 in prize money. He was followed up by a few big names like Bizzle, Poach, and Nate Hill, who won over a hundred grand. Overall, the Summer Skirmish was one of the greatest events to date, and the Grand Finals on LAN gave us some of the most exciting Fortnite gameplay we've ever seen. All of this led up to the end of Season 5, and just one week before the release of Season 6, Epic did it to us yet again and hit us with the announcement of the Fall Skirmish. The Fall Skirmish immediately one-upped Summer Skirmish with a $10 million prize pool. After all the qualifiers were finished and only the best were left standing, we found ourselves once again with a giant LAN and epic tournament. But what truly made this event epic was that it featured duos, which gave pros a chance to test their skills with a teammate. People expected duos to be great, and boy did it deliver. At this point, everyone knew Tfue and Cloaksy, right? Tfue was one of the best competitive players at the time and averaged thousands of viewers on Twitch. His aggressive gameplay made everyone want to watch him, and he only blew up even more after signing with FaZe Clan. As if he wasn't big enough, he and Cloaksy ended up winning the Fall Skirmish Grand Finals, scoring themselves $510,000 in a trip to stardom. Just take a look at the moment when Tfue and Cloak won the tournament. Your number one duo. It's Tifu and Cloxy! You worked six weeks. And you come here, and in front of all your fans, you are the number one duo. How are you guys feeling right now? Dude, I don't, I don't have words. Shout out to all the fans. Shout out to my partner, Tifu. Good stuff, Turner. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Good stuff, Turner. All right, Tifu, what about you? Cloaksy with the hot carry, dude. Yeah, the hot carry. <laughs> Following the insanity of Season 6, another event was announced, along with the massive Season 7 update, introducing planes, the snow biome, and so much more. The first event of Season 7 was the Share the Love event, which wasn't a giant deal, but it definitely was a fun time. More importantly, this was also around the time where legends like Mongrel and Mitro started blowing up. I'm gonna be honest here, competitive Fortnite wasn't really that great in Season 7, until the Fortnite World Cup was announced. 
Oh yeah, this was the single largest prize pool in esports event history ever. This was revolutionary, was huge, was insane. This announcement put Fortnite Battle Royale on the map as potentially the largest esports game in the world. Everyone in the community was hyped beyond belief for the event, and we rode that hype train straight into Season 8. Season 8 kicked off with the World Cup qualifiers, and boy, did it not disappoint. The World Cup qualifiers ran from April 13th to June 16th of 2019, running between seasons 8 and 9. Both are considered World Cup seasons, and the hype for the event practically blended these seasons together in everyone's mind. The World Cup was absolutely nuts, and the qualifiers were where we saw a ton of insane new pros popping up, the names we all know today. People like Booga, Clix, Benji Fishy, Mr. Savage, and Dubs, just to name a few. These qualifiers ran for a while, and the qualifier weeks resulted in a total of $8 million being handed out. The level of play we saw in the qualifiers was immaculate, and was what many would consider to be the most entertaining period in competitive history. There were honestly too many great moments to even discuss. Let's fast forward a bit to the World Cup Finals. Obviously the dude we all know by now, the man, the myth, the legend, Booga, came out on top in solos with a ridiculous 59 point finish, literally stomping all the competition. As for duos, Aqua and Nyrox popped off in their final games to secure first place, but nothing could compare to Booga's dominating performance. Booga's results at the World Cup really did shock the world and showed everyone that there was so much more room for players to grow. A few honorable mentions from the solo finals include Som, Epic Whale, and Creo, who all made over a million dollars, Roho and Wolfies from the duo finals, who each made over a million dollars as well, and Elevate and Sace, a few of the OG competitive players who secured third in duos with nearly a million each. A few of the popular names from the finals include Mongrel and Mitro, who got 6th in duos for $450,000, Mongrel getting 13th in solos for $150,000 as well, and Dubs getting $150,000 in 15th place, Clix getting 18th for $112,000, and Benji and Mr. Savage who each got 30 in solos. As a whole, the World Cup was absolutely amazing and shattered a ton of esports records with 40 million total players, over 2 million concurrent viewers, the highest total prize pool of any esport event ever. And finally, the largest payout for a single player in any esports tournament ever, which went to the man himself, Booga. The World Cup was a phenomenal event and we really hope to see something similar in the near future. Moving into Season 10, or Season X as you might call it, there was a ton of controversy surrounding the Brute Vehicle. It's not even debatable, that thing was ridiculous. This vehicle would wipe a squad in mere seconds without the driver even risking a tick of damage. Think of a giant robot with unlimited rockets shooting 10 at a time, moving faster than any player can, and stopping anything in its path. That was literally the Brute. With this super OP monstrosity still in the game, Epic pivoted by doing what they do best, announcing another tournament. They shook up the competitive scene by revealing the brand new Trios game mode alongside the Trios FNCS with over $10 million in prize money. Trios was a breath of fresh air to the competitive scene and shook up the way players were used to competing. As for the Trios FNCS, teams battled it out over the span of five weeks to reach the semifinals. There, the teams were placed into multiple heats where they battled it out for a spot in the Grand Finals. The Brute was still in the game for the first few weeks of the tournament, but luckily made its way out of the game before the Grand Finals rolled along. The Grand Finals were awesome with some amazing teams coming out on top. Representing the European region with $600,000 to share, we had Chinkin, Stompy, and Aqua who joined up as a trio soon after World Cup came to a close. For NA East, we had Zexro, Macwood, and the absolute legend himself, Young Calculator. Who doesn't love a Young Calculator? This insane trio got to split $340,000 amongst themselves. Going over to the other regions, we had J Roses, GTE Dog, and Booby representing NA West, and Lelio, Kurtz, and Wishy winning in Brazil. Moving over to the other side of the world, in Asia we had Ruri, Rizart, and Malfin on top, with OCE being won by Minkin, Hillo, and Gancho. Finally, in the brand new region of the Middle East, the champs were all from Team Power, being FHD, Yonks, and NM7. Season 10 was a pretty good season in terms of competition, but there was still a ton of flaws, and Epic showed a severe lack of community understanding. 
They desperately tried to keep the mech in the game even when everyone wanted it removed, and constantly added things like the drum gun, burst SMG, tack SMG, and rift zones, which hardly anyone liked. Overall, while Season 10 wasn't the greatest season in terms of actual gameplay, the competitive scene was pretty cool. Moving on from Season 10, we stared into a black hole for 36 hours, I know all of you remember that, and finally received one of the most controversial updates in the history of the game. Chapter 2 finally came, and with it came some unexpected changes, most notably the brand new map and the brand new loot pool, with almost every silly item removed. But this came at a cost. Throughout the season, we almost saw no communication with Epic, and they continued to show that they really don't care. Squad's FNCS was the main event of the season, with Cash Cup tournaments scattered around and Winter Royale duos also making an appearance. Competitive was actually pretty good this season, despite the game being relatively boring with little content and no word from Epic about anything. Our first major event of the season was Squad's FNCS with four weeks of qualifiers, each week with an open session, semifinals, and then the finals where it'd be determined which teams play in the heats to have a shot at the grand finals. We won't name every single team who won the season, but a few of the big names were unknown squad of Avery, Ronaldo, Vanguard, Kez, and himself on NA East, Wacky Squad on Europe and the X2 Twin Squad on OCE. But there were still a ton of great squads that didn't quite win the whole thing. One cool surprise was Ninja making a comeback in competitive Fortnite, with the squad of FaZe Funk, Reverse 2K, and Nate Hill all being by his side. They managed to pull off a 7th place finish in the Grand Finals, shocking a lot of people and begging the question, is Ninja back in competitive? I guess we'll have to see how he performs in the future, but he's definitely looking good. Moving on to Winter Royale duos, we had a $15 million prize pool with a ton of players placing in the money. However, we also had the cheating controversy where teams were able to get into zero point lobbies the whole time and basically just pub stomp, putting them high up on the leaderboards. This basically ruined Winter Royale in the eyes of most of us and really just messed up the tournament as a whole. Most of the top pros didn't perform here due to the cheating issues and the whole tournament was a bit of a mess. Regardless, stuff happens, but I'm sure we'll see Epic making some changes to avoid this in the future. Finally, we had some solo cash cups throughout the season, which really weren't anything crazy, but we did see some big names, including Klix, Kanata, Booga, and most notably Benji Fishy, arguably the best solo player of the season, perform extremely well in these cups. Overall, Chapter 2 thus far has been very good in terms of competitive play. If Epic can fix the cheating issues and continue to push out high-quality tournaments that people enjoy, we can definitely expect competitive Fortnite to continue rising and make a name for itself as one of the best esports in the world. Competitive Fortnite has been a long, fun journey. From a cartoony kids game to one of the most mechanically demanding esports out there, Fortnite has taken the esports world by storm, and it isn't going anywhere anytime soon. I hope you guys enjoyed going down memory lane with me and looking back on all the fun times we had throughout the years. Competitive Fortnite is just awesome and I really hope we're able to see more of it in the future. That's it for the video guys, thank you so much for watching and good luck in your next few games.